Hello, person. Let's crush some online co-op code together, shall we? Let's review what we've been doing the last six weeks, working on this co-op stuff. We've got the server running in the background here, next code. I can set breakpoints here and on the server code and all that. And then I'm run, gonna run two clients here from Vim and launch both of them. One will be in the bottom right corner of the screen. One will be in the top left corner of the screen. So we're gonna have two clients running on one machine. Makes it super easy to kind of debug online co-op code. And uh, here's what we were doing last week. We started working with this thing called the state comparator. And uh, this object, the state comparator, basically can just dump out a whole bunch of data from each client as they're running through the game. And then we can go and step back through it frame by frame, tick by tick, and look at exactly where two clients diverge with their data. What happens with that? Because we're using a technique called lockstep multiplayer. Last week, we were trying out that state comparator and found a bunch of different desyncs. We started focusing on one of them, which was to do with item. Let's look at what actually turned out. I actually figured out what that desync was last week. And let's look at what the heck that was. So what the heck was that? What the heck was that? So we had this list, right, where it was showing us that there was like 70 different items that each player had and the list for player one was different on one client versus the other client and it was it was just like the last three numbers it was really confusing i was like why would just the last three numbers be different but here's how it all plays out basically when the way that items work in wraith binder is that they can have a base item like this sample this item right here this cloak 2 dash four five six five six four c that is the first part of this is the base item, and the second part of this is the magic. So, the, what was going wrong last week with last week's desync was that items like this that have no magic, like forge, one, boom, that was always fine. Client one would have a forge, client two would have a forge, no problem. But when it came to things like cloak two, four, five, six, five, six, four, C, they, the problem was they were loaded in order. So this cloak two on one client would be like item ID 300. And on, on client one or two or the other client, it would be item ID number 315. So it would be a different number. So the, the solution to all that was in this function here called construct item. And this basically takes and makes the it adds in the magic to the actual item type. So here's the code for regular items. The type is actually equal to the index. So it gets, it's loaded first in, first out as it goes through this file called items.txt. It actually goes, it's, oh, this is item number one, this is item number two, this is item number three, this is item number four, etc. And then, and then when it comes to magic items, it takes that base number. So here's that, it takes the type from the base, from the base, and then adds in the magic so that it's deterministic across clients, doesn't depend on what order they're loaded in. And that way, we no longer have a desync when it comes to item IDs, client versus client. So that's, a, that's one desync solved. Here's what we're working on now. We have a whole bunch more desyncs that all have to do with clients running starting at the different times let's actually i'll show you what i'm talking about we're gonna go ahead and run it and we're gonna have both our clients here on the screen and you'll see that one client starts a little bit differently than the other it all depends on the timing so we're gonna see the bottom right client loads first there he, there it is and then and he also vim appears on the elevator and now the top left client vim appears on the elevator but the other player is teleported in so not only do they start at different times, but they appear on the screen in different ways. So that already starts both of these clients off in a desynchronized state. They don't exactly have the same positions. Their move lock timers are different. There's a whole bunch of other things that we're getting these desyncs on. So that's today's goal. Get these babies so that when this player, the first, the first, the bottom right client, well, that's client two, the top left client is client one. So when client two begins and detects that it's part of a multiplayer match, it will pause. That's the goal for today. Make this so it pauses and waits for the other client to be ready before proceeding. Either way that works, right? So if client, if we had client one that loaded first, client one would wait for client two to be ready 
before they both begin and they both load up on the elevator and everything starts exactly on the same tick. That's the goal. So to that end, I have already started a bunch of code for that. Basically what I have is a new type of message. It's called the message ready. And here it is. Message ready is basically just tells you what player and whether they're ready or not. And a client could use this message to tell the server, hey, I'm no longer ready. Hey, yo, I've, I'm dealing with something over here. I've got a whole bunch of packets backed up or whatever. It could pa it literally pause the game by sending a message saying, hey, I'm no, I'm no longer ready. And then the server replies with a message ready reply and tells you, it gives you a vector of bools for all the clients, whether they're ready or not. So now that we have this message and we've hooked everything up on the server too. So the server can actually read that. It gets the message. The server reads the message. The server finds the match that the player is part of. The server looks up the client for that connection and then sets some client flags to be client ready or not, depending on whether their message says they're ready or not. So the server is actually keeping track of matches, of course, and also the clients within those matches and whether those clients are ready or not. This is where the curtains are about ready to be opened and we've sent a message ready to the server. So we're gonna say tick, set paused, true there. Again, this is pretty bare bones. It's not how it should be eventually, but well, we're just doing it that way anyway. Okay, let's double check what we got here. We got two clients ready to run, bam. We're not recording any playback or anything yet. Okay, that's good, bam. Run this, let's see what happens. Our goal is to have one client just pause waiting for the other one to load. Okay, it looks like that, that client's paused. Oh my God, is it working? That really looked like it worked to me. Oh, wow. I'm excited already. That was awesome. Okay, we do have one issue, and that is that one client is still teleporting in while the other one is riding the elevator. We want both clients to ride the elevator, but let's see what happens. Let's see if they really are on the same tick. Dang, I don't know if they are. I don't know. Hmm. Okay, that, that was awesome. That kind of worked on the first try. How can we get both clients now to do to ride the elevator. Okay, we're gonna turn this into a get collision XY then. And we're gonna use the box to, oh, excuse me, allergies. It's getting hot in here. It's hot afternoon. All right, well, yeah, well you, okay. Five. Actually, I think there's a function I already wrote called find elevator somewhere. It's also in NIMS, okay. And it finds with, oh my gosh, this is great. This is, this is what I needed right here. It's at line 5534. Okay, we're gonna move that function. And great, we don't have to write anything new as far as code goes. So let's run that, baby. Once again, what we're looking for here is for both of the clients to be standing in the correct place at the beginning and for them to ride the elevator up together and us to see that in a really synchronized, beautiful way. It looks like synchronized swimming. Imagine these characters had some really nice swimming hats on. They're in some really nice sleek bathing suits. They're doing very graceful movements the whole time. That's what we need to see here. Come on. Come on, synchronized swimmers. Oh, Vi what the heck just happened there? Vim rode the elevator very nicely. Good job, Vim. But something really weird happened on the other client. The camera got totally off. Why? I have no idea what just happened there. What the heck? Not only that, but I can move. I, I'm actually moving client one's character, Cam, but I, I'm not seeing client. Oh gosh, I don't know. Okay. Wow, that almost worked. Cam is standing in the wrong place, and something happened with their animations, which wasn't quite right. Huh, but now it seems that Cam is in the right place? This is really weird. Wow, look at that. Even the. Oh. We're really almost on the right track here. This is great. The gold thief just appeared on both people's screen for the first time ever in six weeks of multiplayer coding. It almost seems like the AI was synced up there. Is that is that for real? Did we get another gold coin here? It's, oh my god, it happened twice! Oh my god, I think we're actually in sync right here. This is a really big moment. <laughs> Holy crap! What? Prove it. Let's do it one more time. Oh! This is so great. Okay, I don't know if every single run we're always going to be in sync, but this is a really sweet moment for for Wraithbinder's multiplayer code. That's really neat. That says a lot. 
to have the AI actually run exactly the same on both screens is huge. That means we're right on the right tick, everything's lined up, we're pretty much in sync for that to be able to happen. That's super cool, super duper sweet. Oh my god. Oh, there we have a problem. Look at this, the gold appeared. The gold didn't flip in the exact same way. We got, on one client we got gold over here. Whoa, whoa! Another client has the gold over here. Okay, we're out of sync now. All right, so it's like I said, it's not gonna happen every time that we are in sync. But it was really neat that we were in sync there for a second. Everybody saw it, I'm sure you guys all noted that. Everything was recorded and duly noted and there was several witnesses. What are those people called, the sign things? Signers? Notaries, there were several notaries in place. I've got a little log statement in place now, which says when it sets the dungeon home. This is kind of the important thing, is when, because we've got players loading in, right? We got this player loading in, joining the game, the other player's loading in, joining the game, and it's like, maybe what's happening is that it sets the player's position once, and then the other player joins and realize, and then the, and then it should be setting the player's position again. Maybe that's what's going on. I finally looked at this bottom right client, and he didn't ride the elevator. Oh, that might be the, oh, that might be why there's they have the wrong positions. He's not riding the elevator on one of them. So hey, if you just joined the stream, what I'm working on here is a multiplayer game called Wraithbinder. This is an online co-op roguelite, and I'm working on some code that gets both of the clients to start at exactly the same tick and in exactly the same way. So what we're working on now is a little bit of code where two players rise up on an elevator and start the level at the same time. I'm trying to get them to rise up on the elevator exactly the same on both clients, totally synced up. So that's where what we're working on right now. So these are little offsets have to do with how much the, off, the players offset from the elevator itself. I think that's right. Ah, we've been messing with this way too much. Just run it. Man. Running out of steam. Running out of steam. B mental steam. is Doing things the wrong way is learning. Absolutely, isn't it? Might as well do things the wrong way as much as you can. Learn as much as you can along the way. Oh, 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 it worked! Both of the players rode the elevator at the same time. Both of the players are... Wait a second. Cam's in the wrong place, though. That might have to do with those offsets. Cam is slightly too high on the, on the first client. See this? Look at Clam's feet right here. He's above that little, the, whatever that is. Okay, let's, what if, what if the offset was zero every time? <laughs> okay, removing the offsets put the players on top of each other, of course. That's really funny. But nonetheless, they might actually be in perfect sync. Let's find out. Let's see, let's, we're going to hit that, put some gold on the ground. Look at that, the gold's in the same place. If I get out of the way, the, hey, look, look at that. The gold thief came in exactly the right time. Looks like we might be in sync here. We're gonna use the other player to now, some more gold's on the ground. It's, the gold's still in the same place too. That's good. Where's that gold thief at? There he is. Oh, he did the same thing on both clients. Okay, this is really great. Oh my God. Okay, I think what indeed was happening was we had the wrong offset. Oh, oh, oh I got an idea. What if our offset is just X and Y, right? The Z is the thing that is changing over time, right? The player's riding up the elevator. So if we just set X and Y, and then set our Z to something constant, then we should have something where both players are always in sync. The player's way too high in the sky here. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's not what I meant. Is it end pause, actually? Oh, 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 oh. Okay, uh, this is a really, really simple thing. It shouldn't be either start pause or, or end pause because this is an offset, not a position. It's not an absolute position. This is a relative position, an offset. So this needs to be zero. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, okay. Oh, yes! Oh! Oh, I love it. They're in exactly the right positions now. So sweet. Look at that. They even raised their swords at the exact same time. This is awesome. Okay, let's test this out with the AI. We got some gold on the ground. Looks like the gold is in the same spot on both clients. That's good. Yep, the gold thief acted the exact same. Let's get that gold thief to come on the screen one more time. There he is. Oh, look at that. Oops, it looks like he acted wrong. He might have acted wrong. I'm not sure. Whatever. Oh, there we have a little bit of a problem. Look at this. Whoops. 
I accidentally picked up that piece of gold, but the gold was in the wrong position on one screen. So one client had the gold and the other didn't. And look at this, now that now that, that gold thief came, he stole the gold on one screen, but he didn't steal the gold on the other, other screen. So things have gotten out of sync, but we've made some huge strides on today's stream. So the goal of today's stream was to get these clients to start exactly on the same tick in exactly the same way riding up the elevator the same together and look at this we've achieved that we're going to play it one more time they'll kind of do a little recap of today's stream so we're going to watch both clients come on the screen the, the same time both riding the elevator both in these the, the correct positions on the elevators on the elevator bam oh that's really great so so satisfying to see that. All right, man, this is great. So we're off to a really good start here. This is, we're about six weeks in on writing co-op code. A lot of it has been like getting things synced up and all that, but we're, we're good. This is a really, really good step now. I mean, if we can get our players off on the right foot, exactly on the right thing, and then kind of deal with the desyncs as they come, like little tiny things, like maybe this player has I don't know. I'm not even sure exactly what we're going to find as far as desyncs go. But once we get this all, all a lot of these desyncs handled, then we're going to be really a lot closer to ready for July 14th's beta. So that's the next time you'll be able to play this. Yeah, July 14th through the 25th, Wraithbinder is having its fourth public beta. So if you, ever, if you want to be part of this, just go to Wraithbinder's Steam page, click the green Request Access button, and July 14th, you will be able to play this in your library on Steam. So, and it will be multiplayer. You'll be able to play this multiplayer with other people online or your friend. And it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so it'll be fast if you are really close to someone. Like if you're playing on a local network, it'll just be super duper fast automatically. How about that? So, yes, that's it for today's stream. I'm kind of recapped what we did here today with getting these players to be in sync starting up. And that really did a lot for keeping these players in sync. In fact, we've seen a couple instances where we saw the exact same AI code running on both clients for a little bit. Things got out of sync after a second though, so there's something going wrong with the desync somewhere. The clients are slightly getting out of sync in some of their variables somewhere. But we've got a tool for that! It's called the State Comparator. It's this thing that dumps out all this state data and we can go back and sift through it with the comb and figure out exactly which grains of sand are different on each client. So, thanks for watching this stream. I'll be back next Wednesday. I, my name's WizardFoo. I make video games like Songbringer and the upcoming action roguelite Metroidvania Wraithbinder. Ugh! Later!